always realize it, but robots are becoming increasingly integrated into our lives. Robotic factory workers build our cars, our appliances, and almost everything we touch at home and at work. In our homes, we no longer have to worry about the dirt on our living room floors. Our robotic vacuum cleaners will automatically sweep it up. Robotic-assisted surgeries enable complex procedures to be performed through increasingly smaller incisions, helping to minimize trauma and recovery times. And on my commute home each day, I pass a billboard which advertises, advertises assistance with planning for an early retirement, proposed as a contingency in case robots eventually take over my job. But what's coming next? How about soft robots that you can wear like clothing? A robot that assists you with physical activities, like walking, running, or lifting heavy objects. These wearable robots will assist human motion, similar to an exoskeleton, but their flexible construction allows complete freedom of movement. This juxtaposition of assistance and transparency enables a new paradigm of mobility-assisting robots for real-world environments. For example, suppose you are a recovering stroke patient. In most cases, you're still ambulatory. That is, you can walk, but it may be difficult, slow, or unstable, and you may tire easily. A soft, wearable robot may be able to help by providing small amounts of assistance to your leg in synchronization with your natural walking patterns, these robots may enable better and safer walking within the community, and may even be able to train you to improve your walking and independence post-stroke. Built-in sensors measure your natural walking patterns and automatically detect when you begin to change your speed or direction, so that the assistance is always kept in sync with you. We call these soft, wearable robots exosuits. And it's true. They don't look anything like traditional robots. There's no metal body, no mechanical head, no camera lenses for eyes. It can't even stand up on its own without your help. But make no mistake, this is a robot. And like robotics in many fields, the Exosuit is challenging our historical notions of what a robot can be and do. Growing up, I never imagined myself becoming a roboticist. I don't remember playing with robotic toys as a child, and I'm embarrassed to admit to my coworkers that I still have never seen some of the classic robot movies like Terminator or Robocop. But as I became more involved in medical robotics, as a part of the Exosuit's development team, I realized that there are many non-traditional approaches to robotics, and that by transforming the way that we think about robots, we can transform our relationship with them and the types of challenges we can design them to solve. I did always want to be an inventor, even if my path to becoming a robotic designer wasn't always so clear. I studied biomedical engineering because that was how I felt I could make the biggest impact in some of the challenges in healthcare. To my mind, I didn't want to be a doctor who fixed one heart at a time. I wanted to be the engineer who designed a solution to help all the doctors fix all the hearts. A modest goal. My first job out of school was in field support for a medical device company. I trained surgeons and nurses how to use new equipment that my company had designed which was an education all by itself. I got to see firsthand how sometimes there are gaps between what features are developed in the lab and what is wanted or needed by clinicians in the real-world setting. With this in mind, I decided to go back to graduate school to study product design with a more customer-focused approach. But before I could get there, my plans were temporarily derailed. During the drive across the country to move out for school, I was involved in a serious car accident. My foot was crushed underneath our car, and I was airlifted to the hospital for emergency surgery. I ended up losing part of my foot, and spending the next eight weeks recovering 
not knowing if or how well I would ever be able to walk again, much less run. Eventually, I started to heal, but ironically, this was the most difficult part of my recovery. For as long as I was in bed or on crutches, I could maintain hope that once my physical wounds had healed, my life might return to normal. But as I began to take my first painful steps on my own, reality began to settle in about how much my life had changed. Though I could walk, it was no longer the effortless, pain-free activity that, I, that it had once been. And it would take years before I became comfortable with the new normal. Throughout this experience, I became acutely aware of just how much mobility can impact patients' quality of life. When I eventually returned to graduate school, I channeled my interests by focusing on the fields of prosthetics and assistive devices. I spent nearly a year interviewing prosthetists and amputees, trying to understand how new technologies could be used to improve the comfort and fit of prosthetic devices, and therefore the mobility and quality of life for amputees. But I also learned that any new technology would have to be designed to leverage the existing skills and techniques of the prosthetists who build the devices, or else the true value of these new technologies would never be realized. This was primarily a thought experiment, an exercise in understanding how to approach a complex design problem with multiple stakeholders. But it would provide me with skills and insights that would prove very valuable when I was approached to, to help develop a new technology called Exosuits a year later. When I was approached by the lead investigator of the Exosuits team, the technology was still in its early stages. It was currently being developed to help soldiers with walking while carrying heavy loads, but we wanted to adapt it for medical applications. We identified stroke rehabilitation as an ideal target population whose needs were underserved by traditional approaches. Together with clinical collaborators, we formed a small team focused on adapting this early exosuit technology for this population. Over the next five years, this team would evolve into a multidisciplinary group of over 30 people from a diverse range of backgrounds. And I do mean diverse. Biomechanists, computer and software engineers, apparel designers, Mechanical and electrical engineers, physical therapists, and human factors specialists would all come together to help develop the technology of the exosuit. We started with just one patient who had volunteered to be our first test subject. She helped us to learn how to learn as we progressed mostly by trial and error, figuring out how to adapt this early technology to her specific needs. We had to learn how her walking differed from the healthy walking that we had seen in soldiers. We had to figure out what type of assistance she needed and how we could provide this with the exosuit. We had to understand how her walking or her goals might change from day to day or between the treadmill and overground, and how we could measure these changes. We had to design the clothing so that it fit comfortably and securely to her body and would hold the assistive elements in position to deliver biologically appropriate assistance. And with each new volunteer that we recruited after her, we had to relearn these things all over again to help ensure that our designs would have broader applications within this population. As the technology continued to evolve, we started to see some exciting results, both measurable and immeasurable. Using motion capture technology and computer analysis, we were able to measure the direct impact that the exosuit made to patients walking. Typically, patients recovering from stroke have pronounced weakness on one affected side of their body, resulting in difficulty using this leg to help push the body forward, and a reduced ability to lift the toes to clear the ground with each step. But with exosuit-assisted walking, we found that patients were using their affected leg more, resulting in a 20% improvement in the symmetry of effort done by each leg to help propel the body forward. And we also saw a significant increase in the amount that patients were lifting their toes, allowing them to swing their foot forward more safely. 
But my favorite type of feedback came from the patients themselves. After one stretch of walking, I noticed one of our patients smiling to herself. When I asked her why, she said, I just realized I was thinking about my grocery list. I haven't been able to think about anything during walking since before my stroke. What she meant was, for her, walking is not an automatic process anymore. Typical walking demanded 100% of her concentration. Thinking about things like where to put her foot, how to shift her weight onto it. She is forced to think about every detail of the walking process during every step from the car to the grocery store. And I realized that any technology that can free your mind from that is more than just a solution. It's a form of liberation. The current embodiment of the exosuit consists of close-fitting garments that are worn on the affected leg of the patient. These garments contain integrated elements which span key joints and can contract on command in synchronized timing with the underlying musculature which controls that joint. An analogy I like to use is that the exosuit is like a wearable marionette with cables that attach to the patient's foot and help to lift the foot up and down in timing with their natural walking. But what makes an exosuit truly unique is that when it is in the relaxed state, it allows total freedom of movement. It can completely get out of the way when it is not needed. Of course, as with many technologies, the exosuit's greatest strengths are also the source of its greatest challenges. Lacking a rigid structure, the exosuit is comfortable and non-restrictive. But by the same token, it does not and cannot provide structural support. And the levels of assistance that it does provide are only a portion of the biological forces exerted by your muscles. In other words, the exosuit helps you do the work but it cannot do the work for you. But these qualities are precisely why we believe the exosuit will be such a valuable tool for stroke recovery. Approximately 800,000 strokes occur in the US each year. And roughly 80% of these strokes will result in some form of long-term physical limitation. Most stroke survivors will regain some ability to walk, through recovery and physical therapy. But all too often, this new normal for patients walking is vastly limited compared to their previous abilities. Walking is often slow, unstable, or exhausting. And simple daily tasks, like walking through the grocery store, become major obstacles that hardly seem worth the risk or effort. Traditional assistive devices, such as rigid braces, can be used to help improve patient mobility but their rigid construction often limits patient movement so that over time, the, pa the patient's existing strength and range of motion will begin to decline. The exosuit seeks to address these challenges in two ways. In the clinic, the physical therapist can use the exosuit and adjust the assistance to provide more assistance or less assistance. This ability to adjust enables the therapist to challenge the patient to maximize their recovery based on their individual goals and needs, while still enabling a freedom of movement to mimic a more real-world environment. And in the future, personalized exosuits may be used to enable better and safer walking throughout the community without sacrificing patients' existing strength or range of motion. Future exosuits may even individually adapt to changes in conditions or changes in patient needs in order to optimize the assistance that they provide moment by moment, day by day, or week by week. It's pretty exciting to be a part of something like this. It's rewarding to be able to help patients recover a measure of their mobility. And we have seen that even subtle changes can be profoundly meaningful. When you're pioneering a technology that can make a difference in the lives of millions of people, it's fascinating. It's hopeful. And it is important to keep in mind that while the spotlight may be on the technology, the focus is always on the people. The better technology gets, 
the more integrated into our lives it becomes. Patients don't have to think about using an exosuit. Don't feel constrained when they're wearing one. The goal is to provide assistance that is so synchronized to your needs that you don't even feel it. You just feel the freedom of walking. Thank you. <laughs>